So yesterday we have discussed about the drug acyclovir, which is one of the important drug that is very commonly used in uh, human beings and uh, the most prescribed drug, especially in case of the human herpes zoster virus. So herpes and other thing, you know very well that uh, the it is a dermatopic uh, virus and causes the herpes zoster. So apart from that one, uh, especially may, many of the other drugs like the valacyclovir is a one valine ester product of the class acyclovir. So it is uh, similar. Most of the things are very similar to that of the acyclovir, but it is converted rapidly and almost completed to acyclovir. So just to remember something about the yesterday's classes. So we have uh, come to the structure of the virus, which is uh, containing the outer coat. Then inside there is either uh, double standard DNA, single standard DNA or RNA are present. And uh, there are various steps like the virus uh, gets attached uh, to the host cell and takes the control of the host cell and get inside the cell and there the outer shell opens and all the genetic material will be mixed with the cytoplasm of the host cell. Then uh, it takes the control of the mRNA of the host cell and the produces its own protein. Uh, yes, this is one of the class, how it is uh, going to do the action. Whereas all these steps in different steps, like entry of the virus, then uh, it's, yes, uh, it is uh, the, un or it's evacuating uh, program. And also sometimes the, uh, it is going to take the control of the mRNA and produces its own proteins. Whereas the drugs like acyclovir are going to be converted from the monophosphate to triphosphate. And this inserts a, what you call as the defective DNA strand of the uh, virus and hence the virus dies. So, or it's a growth stop. That's how it's going to have the mechanism of action. And especially uh, very similar to that of the acyclovir, this especially the uh, well, our cyclovir is also going to convert it to the other form, especially it is converted to acyclovir. So that's going to act in such manner. Then this enhances the concentration of active drug acyclovir in the blood, which reaches approximately uh, that observed following IV injection of the acyclovir. So. Uh, anyway, this is a prodrug. Velocyclovir is a prodrug. Just if you remove VAL, then it becomes the acyclovir only. So nothing uh, uh, special about this thing because uh, all the properties are very similar to that of the acyclovir. All the mechanism of action and uh, the spectrum of activity are essentially similar to that of the acyclovir, whereas the velocyclovir is less used for the treatment of feline herpes 1 because it is used in casts is associated with the bone marrow suppression and also the hepatic necrosis and renal damage. So it's available as the tablet, uh, tablets, 1000 uh, milligram tablet. So it is uh, used in case of human herpes virus very commonly. Whereas the gamcyclovir is uh, another drug very similar to that of the acyclovir. Hence, uh, if you learn the mechanism of action, et cetera, of the acyclovir, it is sufficient to study the gancyclovir. And it differs from the acyclovir structurally only by addition of a hydroxyl methyl group at the acyclovir side chain. And its mechanism of action is very similar to that of the acyclovir. And it is active against all the herpes virus, particularly against the cytomegalovirus that are similar to that of the acyclovir for herpes simplex virus. So the totally what we can say is the gancyclovir, uh, the kinetics and other things need not be studied because uh, it is having the exactly the mechanism of action to that of the acyclovir. Whereas the side effect of gancyclovir is it is toxic to host with myelosuppression means it is going to suppress the bone marrow 
cells especially what happens jan kat khate so the bone marrow suppression is uh, seen with this particular thing and hence in bone marrow the neutrophils are formed hence there is decrease in the number of the neutrophils and also the thrombocytes especially the thrombocytopenia occurs and cns affects especially the behavioral changes convulsions coma and all these things will happen in uh, the toxicity of gan cyclovir whereas the other less common adverse effects are azotemia or ketone body sir so increase in the body the fever hepatic dysfunction then infusion related phlebitis and gi disturbances so acyclovir is also having the uh, especially it is highly painful if it is given im hence it is always uh, administer iv in case of the animal sir concern and uh, this causes the phlebitis whenever you are uh, injecting iv hence it need to be administered in the fluid and after dilution and gancyclovir is available as 500 mg tablet and the 500 mg and then the it is effective for the treatment of the chronic suppression of cytomegalovirus that is the retinitis so especially in the human beings with acquired immune deficiency syndrome that is hiv or aids induced immunodeficiency because of its toxicity its use in case of uh, the animals is limited of course gancyclovir should not be combined with other cytotoxic drugs like the chemotherapeutic agents should not be used with these drug especially anti cancerous drugs whereas the another drug that is the olgancyclovir which is one of the drug one valyl ester product of the gancyclovir so it is converted in vivo to gancyclovir which uh, produces the desired antivirus action say so about just to know the name because uh, whenever you see a tablet and the other thing you should not confuse that is the then another drug that is the pencyclovir so pencyclovir is an acyclic guanine and uh, nucleotide analog so it is uh, similar to that of the acyclovir in the spectrum of activity and also in the potency both are same but it's a new class of the drug which is devoid of the other side effects and uh, acyclovir does not uh, terminate dna chain because it has three hydroxy group and it is used in as iv or topically for the management of the herpes simplex virus especially which causes the herpes uh, infection in case of the human beings and also the variella variella juster virus we said a so it is mutagenic at high concentration in in vitro so the in vivo studies now of course uh, it has not shown any time then the another drug that is the famcyclovir is converted to in vivo via first fast metabolism to that is the pencyclovir so here the pens it is converted to pencyclovir which is the end result of the metabolism that's the hepatic first pass metabolism so it is used orally for the treatment of hsv that's the herpes simplex virus and venezuela simplex virus zoster infections especially the famcyclovir is available as the tablet with 500 mg as uh, the blister pack it's containing and the ribavirin nowadays this ribavirin is one of the drug which is uh, uh, talk of the town now because in the coronavirus infection but it is a purine nucleoside analog with a modified base and d ribose sugar and it resembles structurally to guanosine and inosine so it is resembled structurally to guanosine and uh, inosine so it is available as the 200 mg capsules and coming to the mechanism of action of the ribavirin it's a little bit different from that of the acyclovir so it is not uh, understood properly 
it is poorly understood, but it's mainly related to the generations of its mono and triphosphate derivatives by the post enzyme, which synthesize of the uh, GTP and DGTP required for RNA and DNA synthesis respectively. So it's triphosphate and monophosphate are going to block the enzyme, which is required for the synthesis of the RNA. That's very simple what we can say. And ribavirin triphosphate inhibits uh, the GTP dependent phi capping up of the viral messenger RNA. And then as a result of which the mRNA is rapidly degraded by the exonucleus resulting in inhibition of viral protein synthesis. So the further, if you want to go a little deep, that is it is going to inhibit the GTP and DGTP uh, in the, this dependent phi capping of the viral messenger RNA and hence the viral RNA synthesis is stopped. So this uh, is going to inhibit the viral protein synthesis. So this is the uh, mechanism of action, how this is uh, going to act, especially the ribavirin. So here you can see that inside the, uh, inside the host cell, especially the virus, it is uh, inside these uh, erythrocytes, they do carry the ribavirin, then the ribavirin will come and uh, bind with that of the mRNA capping and uh, it, is, it is going to block the G protein signaling. And also the, this uh, GTP, if it is inhibited, then ribosomal function is also inhibited. That's why the uh, cell growth of the virus is arrested and uh, it is a static drug. So the ribavirin has broad spectrum antiviral activity with action against both DNA and RNA virus. Just like what we can say is the amoxicillin, etc., are the broad spectrum penicillins. So very similar to that of that thing. Well, how we can similarize is it is effective against both DNA and RNA virus. Then susceptible virus include the adenovirus, then the Bunia virus, Flavivirus, virus, herpes virus, orthomyxovirus, virus, and pox virus, that does also picosina virus, and importantly, the, the rhabdovirus, yes, the rotavirus, and retrovirus. So you, you know very well about the rhabdovirus is going to cause the rabies in case of the human being, and all other uh, virus are going to cause different diseases in different animals. So the viral resistance is uh, somehow rare. Coming to the kinetics, is uh, especially in the large animals or small animals, it is not available, the data regarding the pharmacokinetic parameter. However, it is very well absorbed, that's more than 50% orally, and uh, it is very well distributed uh, in case of the body. In case of antiviral drugs, the more than 15% is well absorbed because many of them are not absorbed orally. It particularly metabolized in the body and excreted by both renal and biliary roots as parent drug and also the metabolite, especially in the renal and biliary. And it's also excreted in the respiratory secretions at very high concentrations. So this property makes it to be the drug of choice in case of the coronavirus. And uh, the side effects as usual, uh, they are all acting intracellularly and uh, it has got the low margin of safety. That means it is toxic. The adverse effects are manifested as the number one, neuroxia, then weight loss, then anemia, then also the another thing, that's the bone marrow suppression. So it's going to suppress the bone marrow. And because of this thing, the, the thrombocytopenia and neutropenia will occur. And high ribavirin triphosphate has reported to cause oxidative damage to the membranes leading to erythrophagocytosis by reticular endothelial system. So here we, we have seen this is accumulated by the erythrocytes. Ribavirin is, uh, it is going to accumulate in the erythrocytes and inhibit the erythrocyte protein synthesis and the function of the erythrocyte. That's why it is uh, selectively, it is toxic. And high ribavirin triphosphate, in more dose, it causes 
the toxicity, especially the bolus uh, infusion, IV means at a single time, if you push the more dose, so it's a rigor, it will induce the rigor in case of the human patients. And the clinical use of this uh, ribavirin is uh, used clinically uh, or by topically, then orally, then pulmonary routes. That's why the spray route is also used. That's the aerosol preparations in humans are uh, the treatment of the respiratory tract infections then uh, caused by the respiratory syncytial virus and influenza A and B. So influenza A and B are very common virus and uh, attack the human being recurrently. And it is administered orally, then it is useful against the influenza A or B virus and also the herpes virus infections. Of course, we have got very good drug like the acyclovir, gancyclovir, etc. for the herpes. But somebody, if they are having allergy, etc. to that, then we can use this thing. So, the cats are uh, susceptible uh, uh, to the ribavirin whenever there is an infection of the cats. And ribavirin is available as both injection and capsules. So it is available as ribavac 200 milligram capsules. So the clinical its use of uh, the treatment of feline leukemia virus is under investigation. And dose is 11 milligram per kg orally or IM or IV once a day for seven days it need to be administered. Then another drug that is uh, the, apart from ribavirin, the vidarabin, we have, or it's also pronounced as vidarabin, or it's also called as adenosine arabinoside. The another drug name is adenosine arabinoside. Arabinoside, and it's the analog of the adenosine, and it's effective against the herpes virus, pox virus, rhabdovirus, then hepadenovirus, and uh, some RNA tumor inducing viruses. Many of the viruses are tumor inducing, just like the hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus. They are uh, going, they are not going to cause many damage to the human being, but they will convert the normal tissue into the cancerous tissue. And hence, many people are uh, having the hepatocellular carcinoma or hepatobiliary carcinoma. And uh, because of this uh, vidarabin is uh, need to be phosphorylated, either triphosphate, monophosphate, etc., then it will be active. The mammalian DNA or the host cell DNA is also inhibited, although to a less extent, but when incorporated into both cellular and viral DNA, it acts to terminate the extension of newly synthesized strands of the nucleic acids. So it's a non-specific thing. Host cells also get damaged and the vidrabin triphosphate also inhibit ribonucleotide reductase, that is the RNA, polyadenylation and transmethylation, especially this reaction. So, it is, uh, even though its efficacy is there, but it's also toxic to the host. And the vidarabin is available as injectable and uh, suspension for IV administration and also the ophthalmic ointment, especially in the herpes infection. So what happens is if you administer the uh, IV injection of this uh, vidarabin, dose related adverse effect like the GI disturbance. So you may be taking, thinking that even though we administer it IV, why it is causing the GI disturbance? Because it is going to every part in the body, maybe the intestinal cells, or it may also pass the blood brain barrier. Hence it may disturb the vomiting center and uh, causes the vomiting and also the diarrhea. And it also causes the neurotoxicity, then hypokalemia, and uh, hematological alterations like the anemia, then leukopenia, and also thrombocytopenia. So all these are the common side effects. So it is a mutagenic and carcinogenic, especially in the animal, and hence uh, the care need to be taken. 
and vidarabine applied topically as 3% ointment is better tolerated and it is effective in the management of feline herpes virus related to ocular disease so especially in case of cats and tigers the feline herpes virus is a one of the dangerous virus which causes the lesions throughout the body so this drug is effective in such diseases then the didanosin is a synthetic purine didanoxide nucleotide that's the nucleoside analog and it's also called as didoxinosin so another name and it is phosphorylated in the host cell to the triphosphate and derivatives that act as a chain terminator and inhibitor of the viral reverse transcriptase enzyme so viral reverse transcriptase it is effective against the human immunodeficiency virus hiv so this uh, didanosin nowadays uh, very effective antiviral drugs are there for the hiv and hiv can be controlled with the effective therapy so this virus this please remember this didanosin is a specific treatment for aids virus in human patients so didanosin is also available as the delayed release capsules as 400 uh, milli gram that's the ec means extended release capsules and uh, it is more effective against poison cells or non dividing cells and the lymphocytes and also non dividing monocytes and the side effects in the human patients include the painful neuropathy then pancreatitis diarrhea seizures septic neuritis and the hepatic failure so these are all the general side effects of the didanosin phosphate then the purine analogs is over now the pyrimidine analogs so here the first drug is the zidovudin zidovudin so it is an analog of the thymidine or it's also called as azidothymidine and it is mainly used against the retrovirus such as hiv virus in case of the human beings so the hiv virus is belonging to the retrovirus whereas the mechanism of action of this zidovudin is uh, it is phosphorylated in host cell by cellular enzymes uh, to the zidovudin triphosphate which structurally inhibits the viral reverse transcriptase especially the rna dependent dna polymerase so please remember this enzyme uh, rna dependent dna polymerase enzyme is inhibited then incorporation of the triphosphate form in growing viral dna stands result in change termination and inhibition of the dna synthesis so this is uh, the enzyme it's how it is going to act especially the reverse transcriptase is the enzyme which is required for the viral uh, this uh, dna synthesis and hence this if this is inhibited then ultimately formation of the viral rna or dna it is uh, going to inhibit so here you can see that what a variety of the drugs are there especially this uh, zidovudin and uh, the other drugs especially the monophosphate is converted to diphosphate diphosphate is converted to triphosphate which is going to bind with the reverse transcriptase enzyme and uh, inhibits the either dna or rna maybe depending upon the type of the virus so they are called as the nucleoside is present inside the virus and there are the dna and uh, the rna strands are there and the ultimate reverse transcriptase process yes okay so reverse transcriptase enzyme if it is inhibited then the, there is no formation of the dna synthesis so this uh, uh, especially the zidovudin is going to 
bind with that of the reverse transcriptase and it is incorporated in the DNA strand. Ultimately, what happens is DNA synthesis cannot amper and this chain will be broken. So the zidovidin are is available as the tablets as 100 milligram and also the injections. And the mammalian alpha DNA polymerase is relatively resistant to zidovidin. So this you always need to check whether how it's acting on the host cell. So it is especially the it is not effective on the host cell because the it is resistant. But the gamma DNA polymerase in the host cell mitochondria is fairly sensitive to the drug. And this may be the basis of unwanted side effect because even though it's acting on, not acting on the alpha DNA, it may act on the gamma DNA. Hence, it may be toxic to the host. And then antivirus spectrum of the zidovidin is, it is effective only on the retrovirus because which causes the HIV. So, uh, it, and because it is going to bind with that of the reverse transcriptase, and uh, the it is action is very very specific that's why the reverse transcriptase is very dominant especially in case of the retrovirus and resistance to zidovidin uh, occurs by point mutation which alters the reverse transcriptase enzyme itself so the drug is going to inhibit the rt or the revert uh, transcriptase enzyme but it is going to change the reverse transcriptase enzyme structure and decrease the activation of the zidovidin to the triphosphate for me also account for the resistance of the drugs. And coming to the pharmacokinetic, how we absorb, distributed and metabolized and excreted. So zidovidin is well absorbed means uh, See, in most of the antiviral drugs, the word well absorbed means it is about 60 to 70 percent, that's all. But first fast mechanism or the metabolism decreases its bioavailability to about 60 to 70 percent. And it is well distributed in the body fluids and tissue, including the cerebrospinal fluid and also in case of the brain. Hence, the virus which attack the brain may also be affected by this ZWD. This It crosses the placenta and also found in the milk. Hence, it is rapidly metabolized by the hepatic glucuronidase combination and excreted in the urine. So body will take care of the ZWD in such a way that it is uh, uh, excreted in the urine and also by the bile. And uh, the common adverse effects it is going to produce uh, the, just like vidurabin, the dose dependent anemia and neutropenia in case of the man. So that's why the, many times it causes the immunosuppression in case of the human beings and may cause the other viral infections. Then it's going to cause the severe anemia in cats and possibly hepatotoxicity in the eye dose. So about four or five times high dose, it may cause such a thing. And the gastrointestinal disturbances like this uh, uh, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain, then also the myalgia, then paresthesia or numbness, then fever, then depression or drowsiness, etc., are the other unwanted effects, but they are occasionally seen or rarely seen. And the drug interaction, the uh, zidovidin toxicity is enhanced by the paracetamol. So usually the paracetamol is always administered with the, any other drug because the patient may have the fever. But the zidovidin should not be administered with the paracetamol. So it is going to compete with that of the glucuronide conjugation for the metabolism. So the azole antifungal agents triazole, ozole, myconazole, etc. inhibit the biotransformation of the zidovidin and enhance uh, the meta-elimination half-life. 
So this should be avoided in concurrent use of the nephrotoxic and the myelosuppressive drugs. Myelosuppressive drugs like the fluoroquinolones and probenicin. It is going to compete with the penicillin and allows the drug to retain inside the body and enhances the toxicity of the zidovidin. All these are should not be simultaneously administered. And the clinical uses of this zidovidin is the first line drug in the AIDS. Zidovidin, first line drug in the AIDS, especially and also in case of veterinary practice, it has been used to treat cats with feline immunodeficiency virus. That's the FIV in case of the felines, maybe the tiger or a small cat or big cat. Then also the feline uh, leukemia virus or feline pan leukemia virus infections. And uh, zidovidin has been reported to produce the temporary elevation of clinical signs in some the HIV infected or not the FIV infected cats and increase both survival time and quality of the life. So, so it is going to recover, make the animal to recover from that of the FLV virus in a very short time and increases the survival time and duration. So this is the Zidovidin or it's also known as AZT. So it is a film coated tablet. 300 milligram film, uh, film coated tablet produced by Glaxo Smith Klein. So available as 3300 milligram and the dose is 5 to 10 milligram. So if a man is weighing 500 for 60 kg, then 300 milligram, then uh, daily 2 to 4 divided uh, doses, it need to be administered and the 5 to 10 milligram is the dose. Then another uh, drug that's called as the idoxuridine. Idoxuridine, vidarabin, zidovidin, and idoxuridine. It's also known as the 5-ido 2-deoxyuridine. That's also known as IUDR. Is an uh, an analog of the thymidine, thymidine amino acids, and it is effective against the various DNA viruses, including the herpes virus. And once upon a time, the Paxovirus was very, very prevalent. And because of the effort of the Edward Jenner, we could find the vaccines, especially against many of the viral diseases. And the polio is totally controlled with continuous vaccination and also the pox. And uh, many of the other antiviral drugs, it is effective against the DNA virus. Whereas the idoxyridine is phosphorylated by cellular kinase to it is triphosphate derivative, which is incorporated into both viral and host DNA synthesis and inhibits the DNA synthesis. That's why the host DNA synthesis is inhibited and the virus is also getting inhibited. That's why it is effective. Then the frequent eye application leads to the corneal defects like the subepithelial opacities. And aridoxyridine is potentially carcinogenic. All these three drugs, newer drugs, are carcinogenic and uh, the mutagenic, and is not used systemically. Only oral use is there. So this is the structure of the aridoxyridine a simple molecule with uh, the amide group and hydroxyl group with two, which are uh, joined by two benzene rings by the nitrogen atom. Then dose of this idoxyridine and it is used as the eye drop. Of course, uh, the, in uh, this uh, AIDS patients, this is a very common infection, especially the eye infections will occur and one drop of 0.1% solution is applied to the affected eye every hour it need to be applied. So after acute stage uh, is over, the 0.5% uh, 
ointment may be applied then to every 2 hours 0.5% so that need this uh, particular this type of the schedules need to be imposed then another drug, uh, another drug that's the trifluoridine so this is a fluorinated pyrimidine nucleoside resembling thymidine in the structure especially the trifluoridine is uh, similar to that of the thymidine especially in case of the virus so as with uh, the hydroxyuridine this uh, trifluoridine is uh, the phosphor related to the triphosphate from that completes with that of the thymidine triphosphate for the dna and poly rna polymerase and uh, because of this step it is get incorporated into viral dna so the viral dna producing uh, this problem will be totally blocked by the some of the drugs like the trifluoridine and it is also incorporated in host cell dna hence it is considered to superior to hydroxyuridine in the treatment of feline uh, herpetic keratitis the virotropic ophthalmic ointment is available and it is prepared as the 0.1% ophthalmic solution and just one drop is installed in eye for that's the 4 to 6 time a day so this is the structure of the trifu trifluoridine don't confuse the drug with trifluoromazine then sorivudin so sorivudin is a pyrimidine analog with high potency especially and selectivity in the inhibiting and uh, the varicella zoster virus especially the is it's effective against inhibiting the varicella zoster virus and on uptake by the host cells that sorivudin is first converted to mono and diphosphate uh, of the sorivudin by the viral kinases and then to triphosphate that is say uh, the name uh, known as sorivudin which inhibits the dna synthesis so most of the antiviral drugs are converted from monophosphate to diphosphate and triphosphate and uh, they are going to inhibit the reverse transcriptase enzyme or the viral kinases and then uh, this is going to inhibit the dna synthesis of the virus so the structure is containing the three hydroxyl group and one bromine br group and one amide group and uh, the hydroxyuridine the unlike this hydroxyuridine this uh, triphosphate derivative of, of this drug are not incorporated into dna but it acts as the competitive inhibitor of the viral polymerase so please remember this sentence that uh, the drug especially it is uh, different from that of the hydroxyuridine in such a way that the triphosphate derivative is not incorporated into dna but it acts as a competitive inhibitor of the uh, other viral polymerase so the viral polymerases are required for the joining of the amino acids and many more functions so this is going to inhibit and cellular uptake by infected cells is about 40 times more than the uninfected cell so this is the advantage also so the infected cell is uh, going to push more and more the drug and compared to the normal cell then the cytorabin is also called as cytosine arabinoside or ara dash c and it is a cytotoxic pyrimidine nucleoside and originally developed as the anti leukemia drug so leukemia you may be knowing that it is uh, also called as the bone marrow bone cancer or blood cancer so it inhibits the nucleoside reductase and dna polymerase and depress the reduction of 
the cytidylic acid to deoxycytidylic acid and because of this thing it is going to deplete the pool of the deoxycytidine triphosphate then this is called as the cytosine adenine and cytosine so this is available for the dna synthesis hence the non functional dna will be formed which are going to arrest the growth of the bacteria so cytorabin looks like this very similar to that of the other three drugs and its antiviral action is similar to that of the aidox uridin and is used occasionally in the treatment of the herpetic keratitis and other localized or generalized infections so if you suffer from the herpes simplex virus then you will know what how much painful it is especially in case of herpes virus lot of tingling pain will be present especially on the skin maybe do on the abdominal part especially the below the chest it is going to form a band and those related bone marrow depression then stomatitis inside the stomach then renal and hepatic damage may also occur whereas the fever and rashes are some of important adverse effects then another drug that is the zalt citabin zalt citabin you can pronounce it as zalt citabin also so zalt citabin it's also called as deoxy cytidine deoxycytidine or it's also known as ddc it is a synthesis uh, synthetic nucleoside analog used primarily in the human beings against the hiv before the invention of the acyclovir and this is going to inhibit the reverse transcriptase just like the reverse transcriptase and adverse effects include the peripheral neuropathy then the pancreatitis gi disturbances mouth ulcers and edema of lower limbs usually it happens and it is mostly used with the zidovedin that is zalcitabin is used with the zidovedin then another drug that's the cydofovir is a cytidine nucleotide analog with actively against the herpes virus then also another virus now called as the poxovirus and the adenovirus so all these are being affected by the cytofovir then this is available as the injection with 75 mg per ml or 375 mg total dose vial in case of 5 ml it is used clinically in human medicine by iv root for the treatment of the cytomegalovirus cmv that's especially in the uh, cytomegalovirus rhinitis especially in case of the human influenza virus hiv the topical uh, cytomegalovirus is considered as useful against the acyclovir then resistant muco mucotin herpes then the herpes simplex virus also the hiv infected patients this drug is used so whereas this drugs uh, structure is looking like little different from that of the other drugs whereas the this is about the pyridine day analogs and the pyrophosphate uh, analogs are also there that's one of the drug is the phoscarnet phoscarnet it's also called as the trisodium phospho phosphonoformate trisodium phosphonoformate or phosphoroformate simply so it is the organic pyrophosphate analog unrelated to any nucleic acid precursor the phoscarnet is poorly soluble in case of the water then coming to the mechanism of action of the phoscarnate it interacts 
with directly with DNA polymerase, especially the herpes virus or reverse transcriptase enzyme, especially in case of the HIV virus, that's the human immunodeficiency virus. So the on uptake by host cell, it does not undergo the significant intracellular metabolism, but blocks directly the pyrophosphate binding site of the viral polymerase. So there is a pyrophosphate binding site, especially in the viral uh, polymerase enzyme, and this inhibits the cleavage of pyrophosphate, pyrophosphate from the DNA, that's the deoxynucleotide triphosphate. So here there is a simplified diagram how the acyclovir, that's the penicyclovir and gencyclovir are going to act and the other drugs, of course. So please see here, that's the a specific virus, especially the herpes simplex virus, etc. cetera. Uh, the acyclovir monophosphate is converted to the diphosphate by the host kinase enzymes, different host kinases. So the kinases are going to convert the diphosphate to triphosphate, of course. Then the drugs like cedafovir and foscarnat are going to compete with that of the host uh, kinase enzyme or inhibit the kinase enzyme. And hence the host diphosphate formation will not be there, especially in the drug. Whereas in case of virus, incorporation of a defective RNA, viral RNA, then the chain termination occurs, especially in case of the virus. Whereas the competitive inhibition of viral DNA polymerase is also taking place in case of the certain drugs and inhibition of the viral DNA synthesis will be done. So the drugs like Cidofovir and Foscarnat, they are going to inhibit the host kinase enzyme so that the drug is not going to convert it to diphosphate and ultimately the DNA synthesis will be inhibited. Then phoscarnate is uh, poorly absorbed after the oral route, then oral administration and deposited in the bone matrix, then it is slowly, slowly eliminated from the body. Then elimination of phoscarnate in human beings is by model with an initial 4 to 8 hours, then uh, followed by 3 to 4 days half time. So initially it is fastly eliminated, whereas later it is going to excrete a delay. Then it is clear, cleared primarily, primarily by the kidneys via the GFR or glomerular filtration and probably the tubular secretion. Then the adverse effect of this drug is very high. Of course, most of the antiviral drugs are toxic, but among the toxic drugs only, for the phoscarnate and other drugs are highly toxic. Then what is the side effect is the reversible nephropathy, then the blood lossing, that is the severe anemia, then also the vomition syndrome of the nausea, then fever, yes, as usual, this the phlebitis, then sometimes the tremor or convulsions, then other neurological disorders may also be seen. Then very high doses may produce kidney damage with acute tubular necrosis, maybe due to the toxicity of the amino glycoside, this is caused by and uh, sometimes the crystalluria may also be formed while the drug is administered continuously. Then other, other adverse effects may include the hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, then hypokalemia, and also the hypophosphatemia. The, uh, apart from this one, sodium loading before therapy is uh, a routine practice and uh, it is done because 
there it decreases the risk of the renal toxicity so the contraindications of the drug especially the phosphornate is renal insufficiency it is not indicated and also the fluid imbalance just like just after the diarrhea there will be lot of fluid imbalance will be there and uh, the high doses and rapid iv infusions may be avoided especially the inhibition of uh, the phosphornate therapy then the drug interaction the phosphornate should not be used concurrently with other the nephrotoxic drug just like the acyclovir then the clinical use is uh, especially retinitis especially in case of the canine malignant viral retinitis it is administered as the 90 mg per kg low iv 90 to 120 minutes so, so it may take uh, one and a half to two hours and every 12 hours or 60 mg per kg iv then minimum one hour infusion should be there Right. So it should be administered uh, for the duration two to three weeks or until the lesions are healed, especially the herpes simplex. Here you can see that the phosphornate zemi. So it is available as the twenty-four milligram per ml vial and. Uh, Slow IV injection is always administered. So that's about the uh, anti-viral drugs, and we can tomorrow we will go for the anti-fungal drugs. So with thanks.